Welcome to another edition of Community. I'm Pete Gallivan. And I'm Claudine Ewing. It's March and it's Women's History Month. Welcome to another edition of Community. I'm Pete Gallivan. Welcome to another edition of Community. I'm Pete Gallivan. And I'm Claudine Ewing. It's March and it's Women's History Month. We are celebrating this month here at the Buffalo History Museum because they've got this great exhibit, Emblem of Equality. It's a story of women's suffrage here in Western New York. That's just one of the stories that you will see among some really great stories right here on Community. And this month, we introduce you to one of the keepers of the message, a woman who has devoted her life to preserving the history, Mrs. Eva M. Doyle. Uh, this month, we want to celebrate uh, Women's History Month. Yes. And there are a lot of women, some very well-known, others not so well-known, that yes. have done tremendous work in shaping who we are as a community yes. and who we are as a people. That's correct. Mrs. Doyle has been a teacher and a newspaper columnist, and these days she devotes a lot of time and attention into recognizing women of color who make a difference in their community. I have honored these women and close to 500 women. I was wow. amazed myself <laughs> when I looked back and, and, and realized that there, there had been so many of these women who I've honored. Some of them are very well known, but a lot of them are not. And for the past 11 years, she has recognized these women through her Roses for Outstanding Women of Western New York Awards. We reflected on some of the women she's honored over the years. And there are two women I want to recognize right, right off the bat. One is my mother. Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Gertrude Townsend. A role model and inspiration for her. And just two years ago, she discovered a new side of her mother. And my mother worked in one of the um, plants on Buffalo Avenue. She always talked about it. Corborundum. But in doing my family history, I found out that she worked during World War II and she was one of the class of women known as Rosie the Riveter. Yeah. They, they kept the economy they, going, they kept everything going. Here. That's right. They kept the economy going. They made tremendous contributions to the war effort. The next woman Mrs. Doyle talked about was her boss at the Criterion, the oldest black newspaper in western New York. Mrs. Evelyn Merriweather. She stays in the background, yeah. but she really is the strong person behind the criterion. She takes pride in the fact that she recognizes women from all walks of life. I honor a lot of our teachers because sometimes we criticize them a lot, but they do tremendous work. We have very good teachers in our system. Community leaders, business leaders, and artists. In fact, one of, of them we featured last year on Community. Oh, so amazing... Her name is Julia, Julia Bottoms. She was the only female artist out of four to do portraits on the Freedom Wall. As a matter of fact, she did my portrait. <laughs> a portrait among many of the greatest African Americans in Western New York history. It's you know, so great what you're doing because, you know, for so many years, history was written through one perspective. Yes. And when you talk about African American history, when you talk about Native American history, mm -hmm. we're just now really starting to uncover yes. and recognize the people mm -hmm. that, that just helped shape us. Yeah, you're, you're certainly correct. And this is one reason why I'm glad that we do have National Women's History Month. From the great women of today to those who made an impact a century ago. I want to go back a little ways and recognize a very early civil rights leader, Mary B. Talbert. She was one of the, she's one of the people that's on the Freedom Wall. Yep. And of course, Mary B. Talbert was very instrumental in civil rights in the Niagara Movement, which is a forerunner of the, of the NAACP. She was an, uh, a person who spoke out uh, about uh, the injustices. She, she was an anti-lynching anti crusader as well. And uh, she's buried in Forest Lawn Cemetery. But Mrs. Doyle points out that you can find some of your greatest role models without looking into history books, but looking around your own family. 
I tell people, you know, sometimes we hear about all the well-known people, but look within your own family. Look at the women in your family who have really um, been the backbone, the, yeah. the grandmothers and the great-grandmothers and your mother, you know, these women also need to be honored as well. Hi, I'm Kim Beatty. I graduated from Canisius College and I studied communications, so I should be doing your job. But you're not. Hear her story coming up on Community. She's the top cop on campus. We're safe everywhere now. Yes. So I'm glad. She's Kimberly Beatty, Canisius College Director of Public Safety. How are you doing? I'm good. Good. I like your hair now. Thank you. Good. What's going on with you? Where's my food? What you're seeing is a normal day, impromptu interactions. He said they love me and they appreciate what I do for them. That's the first time you ever told me that. She even stops to talk to staff. Beatty may look familiar. She's the former deputy commissioner of the Buffalo Police Department. Big titles for one woman, a girl from the east side of Buffalo who attended Canisius College and decided to take the police exam on a bet. I did better than the person that I bet against. It was my brother. <laughs> and I got the job. And I thought, I said, maybe I'll do this for a little while, maybe three years be a Buffalo police officer, and then I realized it was a job that I learned to love. She loved it, not for the arrests, but simply. I love helping people, and sometimes people think, you know, everybody says that, but I genuinely love serving the community. The year was 1986 when she became a Buffalo police officer. What about being a female in law enforcement? How tough was that? Well, it was tough. You had to prove that you could take care of yourself out on the street. Um, at times you might be alone. I didn't grow up a tomboy. I grew up, I had five brothers and I was the girl in the house and I was probably a daddy's girl. Challenges you had as a Buffalo police officer. So a challenge would be people thought maybe I was naive and I didn't know how criminals really responded to things. Sometimes criminals would respond to me differently than they did with the male officers. So we have to be more authoritative and assert ourselves in certain situations. After 14 years on the street, nine years in the academy, she decided to take a promotional exam and she climbed the ladder. So I went from a patrol officer to a training officer to back to patrol and then I became a lieutenant and then I became a chief and I did that for about two and a half years and I was appointed deputy police commissioner. When you work hard and you get out there and you shake the bushes and you do great work, you get a great reward. I married a police officer. Uh, we've been married for 27 years. We have a daughter. Uh, she's 23 years old. Her name is Kayla. She's our heart, our focus in life. To be um, a wife and a mother mm -hmm. in law enforcement, that's a lot of balancing, isn't it? It is. You have to prioritize your life. She also has a stepson. 2018, she retired from the BPD. Uh, not everyone was happy about that, and I'm just going to be honest with you, but it was time for me to move on with my life and do some things that would make me a little happier, like spend some time with my family, um, spend time at Kanisha's, my home. They helped mold me to who I am today. So we kind of like make sure that we stay in the most populated area of the campus. We took a ride this around campus. Hall. It's clear she's the popular <laughs> law enforcer. You be safe. What was it like for you to start seeing more women, more females enter? I thought it was wonderful. Um, women bring a different aspect to law enforcement, but we also have to be able to take care of ourselves. It's a career that had scary moments. For her, there are two going back on the streets. I had to respond to a call alone by myself at night in the dark and I'm going back into her yard and I'm thinking in my mind, Kim, just make sure you keep your head on what they call the swivel <laughs> and cover your back. The other receiving a call that diver officer Craig Lehner had gone missing. She wrote, memories began to rush like water through my mind. Craig was a devoted officer. He worked under my command at E-District. He wrote to her once, you were a great chief. 
you took great care of us. Privately, that day, Craig Lehner presented a United States flag to her. It had been flown over Guantanamo Bay. That was the first time Craig Lehner brought tears to my eyes. The girl boss has received numerous awards for her work. I love my job. I love being on this campus with the students, the faculty, the staff. They've all been wonderful to me. And there's nothing like hearing thank you. When people thank you for arresting them and they tell you, you saved my life. 2020, more women are entering the ranks of law enforcement. Her advice? Make sure it's something that you want to do. I found the job very fulfilling. I still enjoy law enforcement. I still do it today. <laughs> We're talking character, confidence with the Girl Scout. Sydney's a Girl Scout. Hello there. Hi. You're going to hear Sydney's story and more about the Girl Scouts here in Western New York coming up next on Community. Every day we celebrate women um, by virtue of little girls first. What do you feel is the most important thing you've gotten out of being a Girl Scout? Um, definitely independence, definitely um, learning how to do things on my own and not dependent on anybody else. What kids are doing today, they were not doing 75 years ago. Absolutely, so I think one of the biggest things um, we talk about is STEM, um, science, technology, engineering, and math. And we have those programming set up um, the civil engineering badges for our girls. Um, and I think that is one of the bigger changes and just changing and evolving as life begins to grow. Um, the citizenship, we still have the gold award, which is over a hundred years um, and making a foundation for our girls in the community. Character. Yeah. Have you built character? Most definitely. What about courage? Courage, well, yeah, um, because I've learned how to just speak up for myself and for others and for what I believe in whether it's rope climbing or putting together a tent, you all still teach those skills, why? We believe they're important for girls to learn, um, to help them become better leaders, to help them become better citizens, and to contribute to our community and the world. I didn't know what Girl Scouts was, um, and I did some research, and it seemed like a really cool thing, and so I was excited, and I was like, okay, cool, Like this is, seems like a great opportunity, um, yeah. And so when you got into it, did you really like it? Yeah. What did you learn? Um, social skills, a lot of social skills. Um, learning, meeting new people, making new friends. At 14, do you feel like, you know what, I have some skills that I probably would not have had if I didn't go through the Girl Scouts? Definitely, independence, um, going to camp, being away from home for a week. Um, just leadership skills, life skills, building fires. Wherever I go, I am asked about the cookies. So cookie sales are definitely underway. That also teaches that skill, that business skill. Right? Absolutely, it teaches that business skill, it teaches entrepreneurial leadership, um, it teaches uh, financial aid and planning, also teaches business mindset. Um, we have girls of all ages, girls of all races. We still start in kindergarten through seniors in high school with our programming. The diversity and just different backgrounds and everybody coming together and realizing that we're all strong. 72% of Girl Scouts um, currently in our um, Senate are Girl Scouts. 100% uh, of Secretary of States were Girl Scouts. 90% of women um, astronauts that flown were Girl Scouts. Wow. And I'm a Girl Scout. <laughs> <laughs> so do you feel by being a Girl Scout, you will be a future leader in this world? Yes. And what will you be leading the world to do? Um, I would like to be a pediatric surgeon. So just like letting other young black girls know that they can do whatever they want to do and they can be whoever they want to be. Prior to 1917, picketing in front of the White House was very much not done. The Buffalo Six, as they were called, was part of a much larger group of about 500 who decided to push the women's suffrage movement into high gear. It was very much outside the norm. They consisted of a home ec teacher named Margaret Fotheringham, a nurse named Hattie Kruger, Student Janet Fotheringham, Ada Kendall, a journalist with the Buffalo Express, Amy Youngling, a teacher from Blackrock, and Edith Ainge, a worker with the National Women's Party. So these women were um, very much going against the law, putting um, 
their lives on hold to stand up for this important movement. They marched on the White House many times, knowing that their civil disobedience would likely land them behind bars. These were average women, nurses, teachers, who went down to Washington, despite knowing that they could be arrested, and, and they were, they were arrested, some of them time and time again. Um, but they kept returning to Washington to stand up, to, to make a point to the entire country that the women's vote was that important. And the federal government punished them severely, hoping to use them as an example and, more importantly, a deterrent to others who might want to express themselves in the same way. The women were locked up at Okaquan Workhouse, where conditions were terrible. And even behind bars, the women continued their protest. They would uh, go on hunger strikes, so they were force-fed by the prison, uh, the prison guards to make sure that, um, uh, that, they, that they survived. But rather than acting as a deterrent, it had the opposite impact. Uh, women's role, because of these protesters, because of World War I, it ended up changing um, the perception of women and their importance to the electorate, uh, you know, to the entire country, and, and importantly, uh, to Woodrow Wilson. President Wilson eventually changed his views on the suffrage movement. It's incredibly important to show how um, small acts can, can contribute to a much larger cause. They have to go through that, and you should respect what you have now. Women can be anything they want to be. I look up to my mother and Michelle Obama because they're powerful women and they can do anything they want. These women are taking responsibility to teach kids so they can grow up to be as powerful and strong as them. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a cosmetologist. Coming up on Community, Curtis LaBelle. Coming up on Community, Curtis LaBelle. The reverb is tight. Coming up on Community, yeah. Curtis LaBelle. <laughs>
I can travel, I can travel, stone to brick, path to bridge. I can really get into it however I want to um, and, and pull from all of these things that I love about music, these sounds, these tempos, these rhythms, this color. Folks are surprised, folks are surprised. I'm a one man band. Folks are surprised. It's Folks about as big surprised. as my lap. It's got five what they call stations, places where I can record my voice. And I've got some effects where I can, you know, change kind of how it sounds. Thought love's a well, a well water thing that never dried, that only filled up with time. Thought I was earth, a well grounded thing that never moved but was always accepting. Instead of five people standing with me, making sounds and mimicking sounds, it is just me making them on five separate stations to create a song and then sing words that I have written on top of it. Lavelle knows voice is important, the immediate communicator. I can travel, I can travel. She's planning to move to New Orleans, but home will always be Buffalo. There is this kind of heat even in its coolness. There's this tension and excitement and jubilance that, in my opinion, can only come from people of color. And for me, that's really exciting. And as much as I love Buffalo, I don't find that everywhere like I found it in New Orleans. It was everywhere. It's oozing out of everything. But she's about community. The community has uh, made me a disciplined human being. I am cool water. I am great mother. Trailblazers never know they're blazing trails until it's over, right? So I don't really know. But I can say that if the door was already open and it was closing, hey. what I am doing, like many others did before me, is keeping it open. Hey. Hey. Well, we certainly had some great stories on community this month. And a little stroll down memory lane right here at the Buffalo History Museum. Showing how women have made a difference in the past and they're still making a difference in society right now. And we want to hear your story. Reach out to Claudine or myself at WGRZ.com or on social media. We will see you next month on Community.